So now we got power. Okay, let's see if she's seized. Oh. No. Oh. I'm gonna go squirt some gas in. Well, since she's a Chevy, let's see if she fires right up. <clears throat> it's only been seven years. <sighs> What's that to a Chevy? They've been around a lot longer than that. Oh, that's enough for a few secs. Well, now that we got the gas squirted in here, I'm ready to see what's going to happen. First attempt to start this thing with gas squirted in the carburetor and a non-functioning fuel system. Bottle's not stuck. Here we go. Oh yes! She's a good one. Bottle's not stuck. Here we go. She's a good one. Fix the fuel system. We got to dump the whole bottle in there this time. Gotta love your Chevy, sometimes as dependable as a Toyota. That thing started up as fast as that Cressida sat in the woods for seven years. Actually, it was six years. That was 2001. And this is seven years. This is 2008 now. And they both were started, they both were sitting since 2001. Well, that deserves a reward. Don't you know it. Thanks, Brandon, from Virginia, for the farmware. I gotta love it. It's good luck, good luck charm. Cheers. Ha ha, this thing's been sitting so long it's got mold growing. I mean not mold, moss growing out of it. It's a fur factory. Well, that's the top of the gas tank. I've got to chop those fuel lines off and extend them up to make a redneck gas tank system. Lines are cut. Now I just got to extend it with some copper tubing. Well, this 31-year-old truck ain't out to pasture yet. I got all required to make a redneck fuel system. Recycled dehumidifier tubing, some copper tubing, some wire to tie down my 20-liter pail. Simple as that. Just gonna crawl underneath again. I'm feeding that tubing down to the right spot now. Connections are made. We are all strapped down and ready for takeoff. Just got to add some liquid gold to that thing. Imagine that. It cost me $24 to fill that fucker up. $1.13 a liter. Well, that's enough of that for this pig. Let's see if it will drive and go for a maiden voyage. Now, this is pretty strong shit. Good enough for me. Let's see if Chevy, I mean GMC, can run on it too. Yeah. Let's get that fuel system primed so it'll run all by itself. Ah, more beer.
fuck this thing drinks more beer than I do. Take two. Come on. More beer, dear. Hope we don't get a carb fire. Aw, oh, come on. Don't tell me I got a hole in the fuel system. And you got a drinking problem. We can't afford to have two alcoholics out of this joint. Oh, oh, oh. Fuck this. Well, even though my truck is running good on the bottle like I do, it ain't running good on the carb. I had just pulled this stupid thing all apart. I got lots of little bits up there. And it has had water in the carb. There is so much rust and corrosion. I took the fuel filter out and it was just all crispy with rust and flakes of crap out of the tank. Someone pissed in this gas tank or something and then tried to start it. That's probably why they stopped driving this car. Now I gotta blow all that out, take out all those jets, see if I can get this thing cleaned out. The fuel pump, which is way down there, is pumping out rusty water on the return pipe. This is a three tube fuel pump. So the third tube is the return pipe, which most cars don't have. And the fuel pump screwed too, so I might convert it to an electric fuel pump that's designed for carbureted cars with low PSI. Oh well, at least it runs, so I'll continue working on it. It would be good someday. There we got some American tourists up here checking the place out. Father and son. You're looking at an electric fuel pump made for carburetors, low PSI. I've completely bypassed the fuel pump that's way down there that's been wrecked by water in this system. Who knows who pissed in the gas tank. I've got it running up to the disassembled carburetor now. And a test circuit to see if it works. Man, that thing jiggles like a personal vibrator. But it makes steel come out, see? Eh? 